Hi, I'm Sam Warbert. I'm a cardiologist at Legacy Heart Center. Today, I'd like to share with you some thoughts uh, on a very important medical problem in our society, that is myocardial infarction. Despite great advances in cardiovascular medicine over the last several decades, myocardial infarction remains a major medical problem. There has been, in fact, a 25% reduction in mortality um, in, our, in our country with the treatment of myocardial infarction since 1990. Despite this, there remains a high number of myocardial infarctions. In fact, over 500,000 heart attacks occur in our country every year. The heart is a very muscular organ, and it is working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Because it is a big muscle and, and is working all the time, it requires a large amount of blood supply. And it gets that blood supply through arteries called the coronary arteries. These are vessels that run over the surface of the heart and supply the heart muscle with blood. It is disease in these arteries that results in myocardial infarction or heart attack. This occurs when a pre-existing plaque or a buildup of cholesterol, fatty tissue, and, and fibrotic tissue and calcium in the wall of the artery becomes abruptly closed due to a blood clot formation. The resulting effect is damage to the heart muscle that that artery supplies, and that's what's called a myocardial infarction or heart attack, sometimes called a coronary because it is the coronary artery that's becoming blocked. I'm frequently asked by patients and family members, what are the symptoms of a heart attack? The classic symptom is chest pain, either in the mid portion of the chest or on the left side. Sometimes it can radiate to the arm, sometimes to the jaw, sometimes to the neck. It is frequently accompanied by associated symptoms such as profuse sweating, nausea, and shortness of breath. Every patient's different and the symptoms can vary from patient to patient. One good policy to follow is when in doubt, check it out. If you have any symptoms that may concern you regarding a heart attack, it's always better to have that checked out. A heart attack is diagnosed based on some testing that's done usually in the setting of the emergency room. Blood enzymes are checked. These are proteins that circulate in the blood that are found in heart muscle cells. Whenever there's muscle damage, the enzymes are liberated into the bloodstream and can be detected by blood tests in the laboratory. The primary protein that we measure is a, a protein called troponin. The other mainstay for diagnosis is changes in the EKG. The physician in the emergency room looks at both the cardiac enzymes and the EKG to facilitate a diagnosis of heart attack or myocardial infarction. The treatment for a heart attack is based on the premise that time is muscle. The abrupt closure of an artery and resulting decrease in blood flow or elimination of blood flow to a certain region of the heart muscle is what results in a heart attack. So therefore, the proper initial treatment is to reestablish blood flow to the heart muscle. We have two ways of doing this in, in modern cardiology. The most direct way that is most commonly used is called direct primary angioplasty, where the heart attack patient is taken to a, a room in the hospital called the cardiac cath lab, where a cardiologist advances a small tube into the arteries of the heart finding where the blockage is that's the, the, the cause of the heart attack and reestablishing blood flow by using a balloon and then a stent to open the vessel open. There are some hospitals that don't have cardiac cath labs, and in those hospitals, a lot of times, the, um, the patient is given what's called a blood clot dissolver or thrombolytic, which dissolves the clot and allows the patient to get to a higher level of care hospital where a balloon and a stent can be performed. But the important thing to remember is time is muscle. Once an artery closes, the sooner you can get that artery open and reestablish blood flow to the, to the muscle that's being damaged, the more muscle you salvage. Probably just as, part, as important as the initial treatment of a heart attack, it's the aftercare that's important, both in the hospital and after discharge. That includes certain medications that we know are good for patients who have sustained a heart attack, such as beta blockers, which cushion the heart from the effects of adrenaline, ACE inhibitors, which actually take some of the workload off the heart, statins, which lower cholesterol and actually decrease inflammation in blood vessels, 
and blood thinners such as aspirin and other agents that affect the platelets and make them less sticky. Also, cardiac rehab is an important part of aftercare from a heart attack. A monitored, supervised cardiac rehab program helps a patient get back on their feet in a safe environment. And lastly, and just as importantly, is lifestyle changes. Frequently, coronary atherosclerosis and heart attacks occur due to cardiac risk factors that contribute to that, such as bad diet with high cholesterol, high blood pressure, smoking, diabetes. And so controlling those risk factors are also a very important part in the aftercare of a patient from a heart attack. Therefore, patients are usually put on a heart-healthy diet. It is recommended that they do an exercise program, that they stop all smoking if they do smoke, and that they get other things under control like diabetes and stress levels in their life. Mm -hmm. 